So as you can see, we have our Southeastern Partners login screen listed here, and we're going to start from there. But before I even go to that, um, what I'd like to do is talk about um, Remind and what Remind is. So um, first of all, this class is not for CE credit, so it is a workshop. It is your class. So as I'm going to be walking through this information, that is, of course, for you to know. However, if you've got questions, if you want me to repeat things, please let me know that, okay? And during this class, I'm going to actually take my camera down so that you can focus on the information as well. But I just wanted to introduce myself, all right? Um, I've also put in your chat um, some information on how to get help if you need it. And we may be able to have to go over that towards the end of the class today. All right. With that said, let's get started. So today we're going to talk about Remind Ad Edit. And one of the things we want to talk about and what, what we will be talking about um, for completion of this workshop is you're going to be able to not only add a listing to FMLS, but you're going to also be able to add it to another MLS system. In addition, you're going to be able to access user input forms. Um, you're going to add photos or it, be able to invite a photographer to add photos. You're going to be able to save a listing as incomplete and come back later to fina finalize it and publish it. And we'll be walking through that process. We're going to access an incomplete listing to publish. We're going to show you how to update a listing that's currently in the system through, with their status, the price, how to view your listing history, how to create an open house, and also how to edit remarks in that listing, as well as be able to integrate your listing with Showing Time and Supra, okay? Now, what is Remind? Remind actually is a really great, easy to use solution. And just like we have our other systems where you can pull from existing data, you can actually pull from an existing listing and pre-fill relevant information into Remind Ad Edit. This actually helps um, simplify your workflow by reducing your data entry time and helping you to auto-populate auto fields like tax and public records data that, so that you don't make errors, right? So it automatically populates those for you. Also, it's available on mobile and desktop, so you can easily create a listing from anywhere. And it integrates with showing time and super key boxes. So that's always good as well. The thing I like most though, is that it's a free member benefit. So this is part of your membership and it is also an exclusive member benefit, okay? So this is what your screen is gonna look like. Once we get in, what I just wanna mention is you'll see this um, screen, you're gonna be signed in as you make sure that that is actually what you need to, what, what you'll be seeing. And you'll also get a sign in for another listing. At this point, we've got Georgia MLS, but there's also other um, listing data that we're looking to expand into, listing programs that we're gonna be expanding into, okay? All right, with that said though, we're gonna go ahead and go back over to our login screen. And we're going to go right into Add Edit. So I'm going to click here to sign in. And you guys sign into your partners and whichever system that you go into. From our FMLS screen, we're going to go to Products. And then we're going to go right into Remind. Now, again, if this is not your screen, you'll have to go into your screen the way it's represented. Once you go into Remind, you're going to see on the left-hand panel once it loads for us. It's going to take a little time to do so, looks like. All right, so once the system loads, you're going to, you may see where it asks you to know your location. So to actually allow or block a location, make sure you allow for Remind because that's going to help you when you're doing um, any kind of search that you're doing in the system that's going to, actually going to show up. So click yes and allow for knowing your location. Okay. All right, so now you should be on the home page of Remind Ad Edit. Okay, just to kind of identify, first of all, you're going to see a lot of metric data here on the main screen. The thing I like about this dashboard is on the upper left hand corner, you're going to see not only the date, but you're going to see the day of the week. I don't know about you guys, but being working from home at times, I get a little confused as to which day it is. So that will help. Um, and then also on the far right hand side, you're going to see that it does give you temperature gauge. So if you click on that temperature gauge, it's going to allow you up on the upper right hand side, the little gear to actually put in wherever you're wherever you're located or wherever you want to find out the weather. You'll just enter your zip code, click done, 
and it's going to show you a five-day weather forecast for that zip code. And that's really handy when you're going on buyer's tours and things like that. Great for planning. Okay. Also on this dashboard to the left is you're going to see a lot of great ways to get into the system. You can search in that data, and we're going to actually come back to the search functionality. Um, we're going to see, um, you can actually save searches in Remind Pro. You can go through um, the cart system where you can actually go in and, and actually send out um, postcards and things like that through the cart system. You've got your contacts, you've got marketing. So there's a lot that goes into Remind Pro. Now, we won't be going over those today, but I just want to make a point that Remind is actually does triple duty. Um, so it is a, a trifecta of information. You have your Remind Pro, which is where you're going to get all of your, your listing data from. You've got Remind Docs, where we're going to be going into that a little bit later, Docs Plus, where you're going to actually have your documents. And then you also have Remind Add Edit, where we're actually going to be putting our listing in to more than one MLS at one time. So it makes it really easy, but it's a really great program and it's very well integrated. Okay, and we're gonna be showing you that in a little bit. Um, one more thing I wanna point out here is right down at the very bottom of your page, if you're looking at a collapsed menu, maybe you're just looking at the icons here, it means that that, that uh, menu has been collapsed. So there's a double arrow down at the bottom. So if you've seen that, you're wondering why you just have icons and your screen does not look like mine, go ahead and click on those double arrows at the bottom of that screen and open that panel up so that you can see it. Um, and one other thing I want to mention is down at the very bottom, you'll see my name and there's a picture next to my name. If you click on your name there, that little arrow to the right, you're going to see that there's other options under that section. If you go to settings in that, that section, it's going to actually give you a place where you can add your photo in. And um, the reason I'm bringing you here is you can actually do it in Remind, Add, Edit, but it kicks you out of your listing. So I'm going to have you do it. Be proactive. Let's go here. Add your photo in if that's where you want to do it. You just click Add Photo and go and find your wherever your URL is for your photo and then actually add it from here. Okay. Once that's done, what we're going to do is we're gonna click on that panel and we're gonna actually find Add Edit. So it's about midway down the panel. You're gonna see Add Edit there and go ahead and click on it. Now, if several, if you have issues with Add Edit going th through, excuse me, let me get a little water. With it going through, what you're going to do is you're gonna hold down your control key if you're on a um, PC or you're gonna hold con command key and click on Add Edit, and that will take you into the Remind Add Edit screen. Sorry, I'm getting a drink of water. All right. So from the screen, you should be on, well, you should be on the Remind Add Edit page. Now, the way you know that is on the upper left-hand corner, you're going to see Remind, excuse me, you're going to see right below Remind, you're going to see Listings, okay? And from that listing section, you're going to see MLS and Docs Plus. Now, if you don't see that, what you're going to do is you're, again, from the main page in Remind, you're going to hold down your Control key or your Command key and you're gonna click right here on Add Edit. Okay, and that will take you into the dashboard. Okay, the dashboard is very simple. There's not a lot to it, but let's kind of go over it. So on the left-hand side, you're gonna see listings. As you can see, what that's showing me is if I have any active listings under published, or if I have incomplete listings. And you'll note right now, I do have a couple of active listings here. Now, I'm not an agent. I just play one on TV. So my listings are not going to be any competition for you all. They're really test listings. Okay, so these are here to kind of show you and represent what you'll see when you're in your sec in this section. So you're going to see actually the status, the property type, the listing price, days on market, agent office, and last edited version of your listing. Okay, and we'll go into more detail on that information a little bit later. Okay, you're also going to see incomplete listings. So if you click on incomplete, that's going to show any listings that you have that are incomplete in the system. Okay, 
Um, clicking back on published, a couple of other things over here to the right, you're going to see show on map, which allows you to actually click on this little, um, the little X that changes it to a little check mark and it'll show if you've got an active listing in the system, that's going to show that listing anywhere on your map. Again, mine are test listings, so they're not going to show up here. But if you don't have test listings, if you have real listings there, they will actually show up on the, uh, the map here. Just to the right of show map option, you'll see there's a search functionality. What's nice about this is if you um, put in, for example, let's say that I want to do a keyword search. I can just put in 888, for example. That's going to give me whatever my listing is in the system. Um, I can actually um, put in a keyword as well. So if I want to search for that, you can actually do keyword searches as well. Um, and that's going to be helpful once you get more listings in the system. You'll be able to search by those, those listings. And there's one more way that you can filter your listing. So to the right, there's an option for filters. So when you click on that button for filters, you're going to see that you can actually filter at, um, your listings by status. So using this drop down to the right, you're going to see that you can use any status. Um, you can actually look at off market time frame. So up to 90 days. And then of course you can look at every listing, but you can look up to 90 days if you wanna do a search there. Or if you are an office manager level or higher, you can see not only your listings, but you can see your office listings, firm listings, or MLS listings, okay? And once you click on any one of those options, click on apply filters and those will sort your listings by those uh, that particular filter, okay? So that's pretty simple, right? And again, as I mentioned earlier, you have also options to go back to the MLS. So that'll take you back to Remind Pro where it says MLS. Um, and then Docs Plus will take you to your document management section. Okay. As you come over to the far right, you'll see, yes, that nice little button that says Create Listing. Remind's pretty easy on the dashboard, right? So you'll just click Create Listing. And that's going to take you right into the listing system. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to use a, a, a live property, but it's not going to, we're not going to go through and actually activate this listing. We're going to walk through the process um, a couple of different ways so that I can show you how to actually add a listing into the system. And again, this is going to be recorded, so you'll be able to actually go back and refer to this information once we're done here today. All right, so if you look in the system, what we're going to do, um, first of all, on this first panel is just kind of identify some of the aspects of those panel that panel. So on the upper left hand side, when you get into the listing, you're going to see that you have to actually put in five key pieces of information. Your additional your, uh, your MLS. So if you're FMLS, you're going to have whatever additional MLS is going to go into the system. Your property type, your address, your agent office, and your confirmation. So let's go ahead and click on, um, of course, you've got your FMLS here. So let's just talk about this screen for just a moment. If you are a Georgia MLS, if, excuse me, also a Georgia MLS agent and you want your listing to go here, what you're going to do is you're going to click on this little dot on the upper right-hand corner of Georgia MLS. What that does is it prompts the screen to open up so that you can enter in your username and password. Now, I'm not a Georgia agent, so I'm not going to be able to actually add that in, but I just want to make sure that I showed you. And again, these are um, case sensitive, so make sure that you, if you have um, you know, capitals or, or lowercase, that you enter it in accordingly. Okay. Now, in this case, I don't have a login, so I'm going to go ahead and just use FMLS. However, I always recommend doing both if you have that option, Okay, or if you are a member of Georgia MLS. Just to identify some of the other things on the screen, just so y'all are familiar, on the upper left-hand corner, notice just to the left of my address, there's those double arrows again. When you click there, that closes that left-hand panel. Again, if you're on a mobile device, what that does is it clears it up so that you can have a little bit more room to maneuver, okay? Just click on it. It actually is toggle on, toggle off, so just click on it to open that back up. Um, at the very top, you're going to see it talks about the MLS number. We haven't filled that in. The address, we have not filled that in yet, so you won't be populated yet. You've got preview listing here. And then down at the bottom, just want to make a note, it says auto-saved. So the beautiful thing about the system is it is an auto, it has the auto-save functionality, so you don't have to worry about saving every single time. 
However, what I always recommend, because I'm just, I, I'm very careful, is that you do, once you get the option to save as incomplete, that you do that on a regular basis so that you don't have, um, so that you don't lose any data, okay? Just as a precaution. So let's get to the next screen. I've chosen what I want to use, and that's FMLS. And so down at the bottom right-hand corner, you should see a Next button. Go ahead and click on Next. That's going to take us to our property type. So in the property type, what you're going to see is you can actually add in your subtype, whether it's attached or detached, and your address here. So we're going to go ahead and click here as a single family residence. That's what we're going to identify it as. Um, we're going to also select our property type, which again, as I said, is either residential detached or attached. We're going to go ahead and click on detached. So use a little drop down here, go to detached. And then you also have an option if you've registered your listing ahead of time, you can actually select whether it's registered yes or no. Now, I'm just going to go really quickly through this. Um, there is a section under matrix for res registered listings. So if you want more details, I would highly recommend going to registered listing status to get that information. But let me just kind of show you a little bit of how this works. So if you have a registered listing, if you've gone into the system and registered it before this, and now you want to enter the listing into the system, you're going to click yes here if it's registered. And then you also have to click yes one more time here. And then once you've done that, there's a panel that pops up that you have to confirm in order to make that a registered listing. Now, notice when I do that, you're going to see that the, the, uh, the uh, screen pops up and gives you a price and then the confirm option down here at the bottom. Okay, so that screen is going to be a little bit different than the one we're going to use. We're not signing this in as a registered listing. It's going to be just a regular listing. I just wanted to make sure that I brought up the point that if you have a registered listing, this is how you complete that process. Okay, otherwise you're just gonna click no. And I'm gonna do no here and then no here in order to get rid of that registered listing information. Okay, now I also wanna make, make a note to show you that the other property types are also here. So if you have a residential lease, residential income, land, commercial sale, or commercial lease, you can click on any one of these panels and create that option here as well. Okay. Well, we're going to stick with residential for right now. Okay. All right, awesome. So once you've selected the property type that you're going to work with, go ahead and click Next down at the bottom right-hand corner. And just to note, if you guys do not see the Next button, you may have to zoom in just a little bit more so that you can actually pull that up. Okay. The next screen that you're going to see is the verification of address and location. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go into chat and I'm going to give you an address that we're going to work with today. And that address that we're pulling up, sorry, I'm just putting it in now, 4700 Church Street. Hold on just a second, typing it in. And that's a little bird. Georgia, 30047, okay? So typing that in, and we're gonna just put that address right here. So here's the great thing about this. As you start typing an address in, the system will start to look for suggestions for that particular property. Again, easy for easy peasy, right? Easy peasy, lemon breezy. So you're gonna see here, it's got two options for that. Um, I don't know why it has two, but I'm going to go ahead and click on this first one. And what will happen once you click on that address, it will actually fill in that information. Now, and I should not have filled it in, but here's the other thing. If you want to fill it all in by hand, you do have that option as well here. In this case, we're going to be um, pulling that data from the Remind system, okay? So now that we've got our address listed, we're going to go through and we're just going to confirm that everything is filled in for the address. So we've got our church, um, church information, street name, street number. Um, as we come through here, our country is lo um, listed. Everything is in the system. Now, one point I do want to make is if you'll look to the left, there's these little red asterisks. When you see the asterisks, those are required fields. So they have to be completed. 
So as we scroll down, we wanna make sure that everything is completed in order for us to move forward. Now notice I have a little red circle next to my address, which means that everything's not completed. So as I scroll down, I find that subdivision complex didn't get filled in. So now we're gonna put that in and let's just say, for example, for, um, for this example, we're just gonna put in none, okay? So once that completes, we have a little green check mark and we're ready to go to the next screen, okay? Now, let me know if I'm going too quickly for you all. Just give me a quick chat and just say, hey, can you slow down? Hey, can you speed up? Whatever it is you need. Um, but yeah, if you need me to go over something again, let me know in chat, okay? Thank you. All right, so here we're gonna go ahead and click on next. We're gonna go to the next screen and we're gonna identify our agent office information. Automatically, guys, you're gonna be listed as the listing agent because you're putting it in. If you're an office manager level or higher, you're going to see that you'll be able to um, select the listing agent for this section, okay? You're also going to be able to put in a co-list agent. Really easy to search for someone. You just click on the box, and you're going to start entering in the address. Just like you saw in the uh, putting in an address, it's going to be the same concept. Once you see that it's populated, you're going to click on the, the option underneath in gray or um, wherever it's coming up down here in gray excuse me, and then that will then populate. Oops, sorry about that. If you move your mouse before you do that, there we go. It actually sets it up, okay? All right, so next is listing contract date. Pretty easy. It automatically, when you click on it, it's gonna automatically bring up your calendar, listing contract date. Hold on just a second. I think I did something wrong there. All right, so the listing contract date today is April 11th, right? So you just click there and put your date in. And if the date is different than what you what today's date is, you're going to have to put it in for today's date and then talk to our um, finance team to get that updated. Okay. All right. Um, next section, expir expiration date. And so again, open up your calendar. You're going to use these arrows to navigate forward to the different dates that you want. I'm just going to make this for August 31st. And now I've got my dates in. Okay. All right. And again, this is a test listing, so it's okay which dates they are. Um, one more point I want to make, guys. As you see that we're filling in these screens, you're going to see that things at, at the top and at the bottom have filled in. So notice now my street address is here. The number of acres is now filled in. Um, also, there's a back button here. So if I need to go back to enter data, I can click on that back button and navigate. One more thing, too, if I actually needed to go back and I just want to click on these options, I can actually click on one of these options and go back to them as well, okay? All right, once you've gone past them, you can get there. Um, and then the last thing, of course, is our confirm button. So we're going to click next. And confirm, basically, it's it's green because we filled everything in correctly, right? If it's red, that means you've missed something. But as you can see, we filled all of our information in. And down at the bottom, there's a confirm button. Now, two things about confirm. After you click this button, you can no longer change your property type. Also, this is the step where you actually get your MLS number, okay? So click on confirm. And now you've put your MLS number in the system, okay? And for those of us, um, for those of you who just joined us, what we did was we went into um, our main listings page, we clicked on create listing, and we went through the process of entering a listing um, 4700 Church Street. This is just an example of a listing that we are putting in the system. It's a test listing, so we're not gonna, we're not going to go through and actually complete the whole listing. We'll be in we'll be deleting it at the at the end of this process. Okay. All right, so we're going to actually walk through for today. We're going to walk through this listing down to the photo section. We're not going to complete the whole thing. I am going to show you a completed listing and walk you through that process a different way. Okay. All right. With that said, now let's go ahead and put in elementary schools. And again, I don't know the schools. I'm just going to, and, and for you guys, make sure you know the schools, get them in there, right? And we're just going to click on the schools that are available. And then we're going to, down at the bottom, go ahead and click on Save as Incomplete, which is a new button, right? We just got a new button after we click Confirm. And then we're going to click Next. So now we should be at the pricing stage. Now, pricing, there's a couple of different ways 
that you can address this, right? So you can just put the price in and move on to the next thing. So in this case, I'm just going to put a price in of 450000 okay? Um, and I can just go ahead and click next or save as incomplete from this point forward. Now, I don't know, y'all may be asking where the save incomplete button come from. Well, after we click confirm, it actually populated down here. So that's one of the things too that you can you can get that happens as a result of clicking confirm that you actually get a save as incomplete button. And this is necessary for you to actually have an incomplete listing in the system to refer back to. So we have to do that, okay? All right, so as we're coming through here, list price, there's a button right below that says show pricing statistics. And this is kind of a cool system because what you'll do when you click on this button is it's going to bring up stats for um, how many homes that are active in the area, how many days on market for the area, and then what's the list price over sales price percentage for the homes in that area. So you're going to see stats there. You're also going to see stats as to where your home is, um, where you've listed your home, and then where other homes have been listed in this area. So you'll see that there's a, a little key that tells you which, which, you know, homes that are active, what's withdrawn, pending, closed, and expired. And here's the great thing. If you hover over a dot, let's say that we've got um, these homes, like, for example, that have been out 45 days. If I hover over this dot, this one's expired. It was 199K, 39 days on market, right? So if I hover over, it's just going to give me some preliminary information about that property. It doesn't give me anything else, but it does give me an idea of whether I'm overpricing my home. Um, you know, I might want to look at this to kind of see what's going on with the process. Here's an active listing that's been on the market 129 days at 369. So that might mean that I need to reduce my price for this home in order to, to actually sell it, right? So this is some really good data for you to, to kind of look at. Um, as we go down a little bit further, you're also going to see comparable listings in your area. So Again, you might want to think about repricing this based on what you see. And of course, doing your research and doing CMAs is also going to help that process. But um, if you just don't want to see the statistics, if you already know what you're doing um, and you don't need that, you can just click on hide pricing statistics, click and put your um, price. And let me just go ahead and put in a, a reasonable price. Let me do 320. All right, put in a price. And now you can just click save as incomplete. And then next. All right, great. The next screen is our listing details. So listing details, the first thing you're going to see, buyer agency compensation is a required field. That means you're going to put in your percentage or your price as to what you are going to charge for your um, services. In this case, I'm just putting in 4.5% as an example. And again, I'm not an agent, so this is not you know relevant. This is just what I'm putting in here. You guys put in whatever your agreement is with your broker, okay? All right, so once I put my number in here or dollar dollar figure, um, then I come down and I can put in my compensation type. So in this case, it's a percentage. Um, I'll, obviously, you see there's a dollar sign here, or if you want to click see remarks and fill in remarks, you can do that as well, okay? All right, um, next button is dual variable compensation. Um, this one, I had no idea. When I first started training this, no idea what this was. So Luckily, just to the right of some of these options, you're going to see if you hover over the little eye in the circle, it's going to give you information about what this product, this item is, this field. So once you read it, let's say it doesn't apply to you, you can click no, right? But that's just another way to get information about what the fields are. All right, so as we're coming down through here, um, we're also going to see compensation comments. You know, those comments are not required, right? There's no asterisk next to composition comments, so we don't have to fill that in. So we'll go to the next section, which is contracts. Um, and so under, and it, we're still under listing details, but these are just se segments of the listing details. So here, occupant type. So I'm going to click on my drop down. Let's say this is owner occupied. The next thing is special listing conditions. So this is where you're going to see pick list options. And again, when you have pick list options, what you're going to do is you're going to use that drop down. Um, if you have more than one, you can click here. If it's in foreclosure, if it's real estate owned, you're going to be able to put other options. If it's in foreclosure, you may not have be other have other options available. Um, or if it's HUD owned, for example, or short sale. Um, 
So those are options. It looks like you can only, well, used to be more, but it looks like you can only choose one here. Okay. Now let's say that I did, I did the wrong, I actually selected the wrong one. I can click on that little X next to my option and then choose the one that I needed. Okay. When you're here also, let's say that you want to get out of this space to get to the next section. All you do is click in any white space and that will clear it up so that you can get to the next option. Okay. Under special circumstances, again, it's a required field. Let's say it's certified professional home builder. We're going to click on that one. Maybe it's also um, historical. You can use that one as well as maybe live work. So if you want to do multiple options, you can add those in up to whatever the pick list allows you to put in. And again, at any point, if you need to delete something out, maybe this isn't a historical section, just go, or uh, yeah, for this home, go ahead and click on that prop or click on that option and get rid of it. Okay. Again, click on the white space to get out of that section. Proposed financing, use a drop down. You can put this in. This is actually a searchable field. So if you want to put it in, um, you can do that as well. Um, the next section is actually one that I usually select yes for everything, but I'm going to come back to each one and just kind of let you know reasons maybe that you would select no for either one of these. So internet display, you've got allow for internet display, you've got allow address display, um, allow comments reviews, internet automated valuation, as well as in, include interview tour. So let me just go over just a few reasons why you may use this and say no. Um, for example, allow for internet display, yes or no. Um, I don't know if you all remember when Dwayne The Rock Johnson moved to the Atlanta area. Um, you may remember it because it was publicized. Um, and unfortunately, whoever was handling the deal was not able or did not put in the fact that he, his address was not supposed to be published. So if they had chosen allow for internet display, no, that would not have happened. Okay, so that's one option. Or if there's a domestic dispute or something going on where the address should not be displayed or should not be put on the internet, maybe there's an issue there, you can actually select no here. Okay, um, uh, same for allow for address display, same concept. Um, addresses are a little bit easier to find, though. I mean, everybody's got Google now, right? So it's a little bit easier to, to uh, locate. Um, allowing for comments and reviews. Why would you put no there? Um, this one actually was, an example was given to me a while back where um, there was someone that lived in a community. It was really tight-knit. So um, there was one of the residences that one, one of the resident, excuse me, one of the people that lived in a residence that wanted to move out of the neighborhood. And the neighbors were so horrified that somebody would actually have, you know, want to move out that they started putting negative comments on the home so it wouldn't sell. And uh, so that in itself would be a situation where I'd be, you know, probably throw my hands up in the air. But, um, it, and it's, it's probably a little bit far-fetched, but it might happen. And so that would be a situation where you might not want to put in comments or, or allow for comments or reviews. Or if you've got a home that has been maybe gutted and you redid it, but while it was in its his, its uh, past state, maybe there was a whole bunch of problems with it. And maybe somebody knew about that. Maybe they wanted to put something negative on there. Or if you've got somebody who just doesn't like the person who's moving or whatever, and they put negative comments in. There's so many different reasons that you can take out comments and reviews. Okay. Um, as far as the automated valuation number, that is actually something that's pretty new and you don't have to have that in the system. So if you want to take it out, it's, a, um, again, it's a yes, no field that states that seller allows the, the listing can be displayed with an average valuation model on our internet sites. So yes or no, um, it's up to you. And the last is the interview tour. That one actually is, is kind of helpful. So what happens with our system is um, after you have three or more photos, the system automatically generates an interview tour. Reasons why you would say no is that you really paid a whole a high dollar for a your own tour and you only want that tour to show. So in this case, then you would not want that interview tour and you would actually go ahead and select no for that. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead and save as incomplete for this one. And we're going to go on a little bit further down to the rest section, the rest of the section. So 
as we said, interview tours, let's say that we say no here, you can actually put in your virtual tour link right under the next section where it says showing. Okay, so you just enter that in. You'll get that from whoever your tour link provider is. You also have another option for an unbranded tour. So you have as, um, as many as three tours on any one listing. You can do that. Okay, coming on down, showing instructions. If you use a drop down, you can put in anytime access, appointment only. If it's somewhere where, if it's, for example, we made this owner occupied. In that case, I would say appointment only, um, call the listing agent, maybe even add in showing service um, so that people know that there is a service involved and you can actually add that in. Um, if it's something where you've got someone who's not in the home, you can actually select it as vacant and show anytime. Right, so you could choose what you need for show instructions. Um, Lockbox type using that drop down. You're going to go with whatever options. Now, notice we not only have super, but we also have central lock. And because we have other partners, we've got other non and combo here as well. Okay. And there's some reciprocal, the reciprocity going on with some of our lockbox types. So just know that we're looking to do that amongst our different markets. Okay. As we come on down, we've got lockbox location. So for example, if you know that the lockbox is not gonna be on the front door, maybe you can put it on the garage door to the left, you know, you can actually put that information there, okay? Possession, um, again, just kind of put that information in. It's not required, so you don't necessarily have to fill it in. As we come down through here again, um, we've got owner occupant that relates to what we chose earlier. So here's the thing, guys. If you have an owner um, that is part is selling this home, one of the things I always recommend is putting the listing agent contact as the contact name. Because what will happen ultimately is if that home ever goes on, um, goes expired, hopefully not, but if it ever goes expired, then what will happen is that um, homeowner will have all those calls for somebody trying to get that property again. And it's just not going to work. I mean, it's just a horrible thing for them to go through. And I've been here for quite a long time and that's just such a struggle for, for clients. And it leaves a bad taste in their mouth, especially if an agent, you know, just put their name out there for whatever reason. Okay. All right. So make sure you put your name and your contact number or whoever you're listing, uh, the listing contact is going to be. All right. As we come down, the last options are special offers and availability to receive offers. This is the last section of our listing details. Um, for buyer broker present offer, present offer to seller, that's one of those options that I always recommend saying no, unless you just have a really good relationship with um, your seller where you know that they're not going to jump ship. So that's, that's for any buyer broker to present offers directly to your sellers. So my thought is, you know, you're the agent. So I think the um, offer should be presented to you and not to the seller. Okay. And then the last is available to receive offers. Again, that's one of those situations where you use the drop down. there's going to be conditions or no conditions. So if there are no conditions, click on that one and that populates it for you. Okay, and that completes our listing details, All right? Next section is remarks. And I'm not gonna go through and type in remarks. It's not, it's not required field. But I do recommend, guys, putting as many remarks as possible here because you wanna paint a picture for every listing that you have. Now, um, what I like about the system, and I'm gonna show you in just a minute, is um, if you use... Uh, another part of the system, it will automatically put your public remarks in for you, depending upon if you're pre-filling um, the listing with other listing information. In this case, you're going to have to type these in, or you can copy and paste them from this the system. So, up, you, but you have up to 4,000 characters with public remarks and private remarks to actually put that information in. So um, use that wisely. And uh, definitely paint a picture for people to, to get that house. Okay. And um, just so you know, let me just kind of put this out there. We also have um, Lundy is one of the programs that we're actually incorporating into the FMLS system. And Lundy is actually um, powered by Alexa. And of course, as much information as you can put in these public remarks and private or public remarks mostly, that information is going to be pulled over into our Lundy system. And someone who's 
visually impaired will get a better picture. If you paint that picture with your words, they're going to be able to understand exactly the, be the beauty of the house that you're trying to sell to them, okay? So that's something that you can keep in mind moving forward, that Lundy is going to be a, a huge component of our system. And for people that are hearing, hearing impaired, or even if you as you get older, your sight is not as good, you know, whatever... And for agents, we want to, as we're driving, we want to be able to hear kind of what is going on on a property before we get there. So that's something to keep in mind when you're talking about remarks. Um, office remarks, we have 500. Um, details for our directions. So here's the thing, guys, and I'm just going to do this real quickly. So this address is 400, 4700 Church Street Northwest, right? So I'm just opening up a new tab. I'm in Google. I'm going to put my address up here, and that's Lil Burn. So I'm putting my address in Google. It brings it up. It gives me directions. So when I click on directions, it gives me a place where I can click on the details for the directions, right? So I just went to Google, got my details for my direction, and look at what I'm doing. I'm actually highlighting all of that. I'm copying it. I'm going to take it right back to my tab for my listing and I'm dropping it in. So all that information is already there. And of course, if you want to, you can edit it from here. But honestly, guys, this is the quickest way to actually put your directions in. Okay. So I always recommend not putting in CGPS because CG, the GPSs are never made the same. Right. And I could end up I, I remember when I was doing this, um, when I was looking for a home, we searched for 150 homes. And whenever I ended up in a parking lot because the GPS said I'd reach my destination, I just struck that home right off the list. I didn't even bother to look for it. It was just not something I needed to do and spend time on. So I always recommend putting directions in. Right. And it is a required field. And Google helps you. Right. So it just that's how quick it was. It took me two minutes to get my directions from Google. All right. Anyway, I'm off my soapbox. All right. So let me go on into the next section. Save is incomplete. And now I'm going to go to uploading photos. So the beautiful thing about photos here is you can upload them several different ways. So you can actually drag and drop or you can browse to choose a file to upload or you have an option to invite a photographer. And I'm going to walk through each one of these steps just because I want y'all to see how it, it works. And again, the pictures, you know, it's always a good, good idea to use your own pictures or if you've hired somebody, use their photos. So here, again, clicking, you can drag and drop to upload. So I'm going to open up my screen first of all and open, open up my pictures to bring the, the screen over so you can see how easy it is to drag and drop. So if I want to drag and drop photos, I can just click, hold, and drag, and that, dr that drops those right over into the system, right? Hold on just a second. There we go. So I can drag them right in, and it pops it right into the system. Now, if I want to browse to choose a file, I just click in the box, and it brings up my screen so that I can just click on the, the pictures that I want. And now that's gonna add in their additional photos, okay? So either way, you can click in the box or you can just drag into the box in order to load photos. All right, as this is processing, um, just a quick question, is anybody, you know, confused. Is there anything that you saw so far that is that feels like oh, there's no way I can do this? You can say no or yes in my in the page. Oops, that's weird. Yeah, it's going through the process. That one's set up. Oh. oh. That's weird. It's taking its time. So yeah, anybody have any questions thus far? Yeah, some of my photos, it doesn't like, I think. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's starting to load them. It's just taking a few minutes to get them in here. All right, so as this is processing, I just want to kind of go over some of these screens as we're looking at it. So 
In this main screen, you're going to see the photo at the top. If it's the first photo, it's going to automatically be highlighted in blue. And the first photo is always the main photo. Okay. If you need to change it or move it, there are little, there's an icon here. It's a four-pronged arrow. You'll just click on that arrow and drag the photo over, and it'll become the main photo automatically. Okay, so you don't have to worry about doing that. Whenever it's in the first position, it automatically is the main photo. And I'm not sure why these are not, why this is not clear now. Hold on just a second. There we go. We'll reload it and see if it works. I don't think it liked the photos that I used, but I'm okay with that. Give me just a second. Yeah, not sure why it's not like in those photos. And let me just make sure there's no issues with the system. Okay, now I don't see anything going on with the system here, so. Not sure what's going on there. All right, well, what we're going to do is we're going to come out. And actually, this gives me a great opportunity to come in to Remind again. So I'm going to go into um, go into Add Edit. So whenever anything hangs up, guys, either click on your Refresh button. And go back in. Well, now it's, yeah, there you go. And then because we've saved as incomplete, what's going to happen here is we're going to go ahead and click on our incomplete button. And now we can go right back into that listing. So there's two ways, and this is actually kind of good because I, I don't usually go in this way. Um, so there's two ways to actually go into a an incomplete listing. You can click on the actual name of the listing, or you can click the pencil. Either way, it's going to take you back in. In this case, I'm going to click on Edit Photos. So it's going to bring up my listing details. And now I'm going to click on Edit Photos right there on the picture. And it'll take me back into that photo section. So hopefully it won't. Yeah, looks like it, it landed. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I'm going to take this one out. All right, so yeah. So I just wanted to kind of show you. But um, that's very strange. In the system, once we get our photos loaded, um, you were going to click on select all because I just want to show you. So if you click select all for all the photos that you have, you can delete everything or you can download all those photos as well. So it, it just selects all the, the check marks here so that you can actually deal with them all at once. Now, if you want to do singular pictures, you can click here and then you can manage either delete or download photos from here. Okay. As I was saying earlier, if you want to make one picture your main photo, the little um, four-pronged arrow, if you click, hold, and drag that photo, it will automatically make that first page your, your main photo. Um, as we go through here, excuse me. All right, so as we go through here, you're also going to see um, at the bottom of your picture, there's also a pencil. When you click on that pencil, let's say that um, one of these pictures is not, not as clear as I want. So this one, um, clicking on this one, clicking on my pencil, open it up, and maybe I want it, the, the brightness or the contrast to be a little different. So I can actually edit my brightness. You maybe, oops, let me make that a little bit lighter. There we go. Um, maybe my contrast needs to be a little different, you know. Oh, there we go. And then you maybe you want to saturate it with a little bit more color, and then you save the changes. So once you've done that, you've saved your changes. You can also come back up here, reset it, you can crop it, or you can rotate it. So if you feel like there's too much, you know, of anything, you can click crop, and now it'll crop it. It'll actually show what pieces that the, it, you want to crop. So you can do that or not. It's up to you. Okay. I'm going to cancel this crop version, but you guys get the idea okay once you're done you can save changes or you can just x out if you want to get rid of the changes that you've had okay um a couple other things so with this you can also delete 
these photos, excuse me, instead of just checking the box, you can delete right here with the trash can underneath. And if you want to put in your photo captions, you have up to 50 characters under each, each one of these options. Um, and one more thing I just want to mention is we have a timeout on our homepage. So I always recommend when you get to the section, go ahead and refresh that homepage. And it's real easy. You're going to stay, your tab is going to stay open. Just go to your home tab, refresh your screen. I always click on just the half circle, reload the page, and that resets the timer for that homepage. And then you go right back into your input screen. Okay. So what that does is if you're putting in, um, you know, taking a lot of time, maybe you have 20 photos, 50 photos where you have to put captions in. What it does is it resets the timer so you have a full two hours to actually put that information in. Okay. All right. So the other piece that I wanted to show you was the invite photographer section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all these photos. Well, I'll actually download all of the ones we need. We're going to actually invite a photographer to um, send in photos. Okay. So I'm going to click here, type in an email address. And this is actually, again, you guys, everything I use is test. So I'm going to type in the email address, click send. And what happens is that's going to automatically go to George and Jane S at gmail.com, those photographers. Now, if I don't want this to happen, I can cancel the invite very quickly just by clicking on this button. Um, or at the bottom, if let's say that I don't want the email to go to them just as a generic email that I want it to come from my email address because that's what they are familiar with. I can actually copy this link and put it into an email like, you know, make sure it's not pookiebear62 at gmail.com, right? But just in a professional email that you can actually click that link and add it to an email. All right. So in this case, I sent it to George and Jane. I'm going to go into that email so y'all can see what that looks like. So let me refresh here. And it says, and this is again, they don't, um, if you're, if you or your client may have an issue with it coming in as Remind versus coming in as Claudine or as Hua or Lisa, you know, or is it Priyanka? Yeah. So any one of you guys, you can actually put it in your own email. For example, I'm I can send it from here. I can compose this email and now I can take this link. Remember I said I could copy that and now I can put it here to send the invite this way, right? And then I can send it to George and Jane and my subject line and everything. So I could do it that way instead, okay? In this case, I'm gonna click on you've been invited because my, my um, photographer has received it. And the photographer is looking at it, invite, um, Lynn McCray invites you to upload photos to a listing at 4700 Church Street, okay? So they're gonna click upload photos. Now they have to put in their email address, the one that was the email was sent to at gmail.com and click continue to go forward. Now, all they're going to get is this screen. So they're going to either drag and drop or browse to choose a file. So in this case, we're going to bring up that screen again, go to pictures. And now we can actually go in and pick up all the pictures that we want. Okay. If they have more, you can continue to load photos so we can go back to the next screen and you can get the rest of the photos that you want. Let's, where's my pool? All right. So we've got all the photos that we want and you'll just click enter. So as a photographer, you're going to load as many photos as you can. You can do up to 200 photos here. Okay. Now, the one caveat to this is that once you upload the photos into the screen, now you have to send them, right? So there's no button that shows where to send them unless you start to select the pictures. Now, this is my caveat. I hate the fact that I have to check every single one of these photos singularly in order to send them on to the agent. But this is something that you're, you're um, let me get rid of that one. This is something that your photographer is going to have to do in order to send them. So once they ch start checking at least one of these boxes, notice that the send to agent button pops up. They'll click on send to agent. There's a submission that says, are you finished uploading? You will not be able to upload any more photos once they're sent. So the last part of this is that once they send all these photos, 
you're going to have to send another email if there are any additional photos that need to be sent in, right? So, um, so my agent or my photographer will say yes. And then if there are any other photos that need to be submitted, you'll need to send another invitation to them to get those submitted, okay? So two things. First of all, when, they, when they're actually sending the photos to you, they have to check each one of those to click send to agent. And if they want more photos, maybe they didn't send all of them that first round, you'll have to send another invite for them to send photos, okay? Now, the third part of this is what happens with the photos once the, um, your photographer has sent them over to you. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out, close out of the screen here. I'll click on the X, just close out of my, my invite. And now let me show you where you're going to see those. So from the screen, I'm going to make sure I save as incomplete down here at the bottom. And I've got my listing number. I've got my um, address. My Everything's kind of related. So you've got a number. You're good to go. You can click on listings now. And go to incomplete listings. And you're going to see the option to review your photos that the, that the uh, photographer has sent over. So when you get to incomplete section, you're going to come right here, click on the blue button that says review photos. It'll take you right into the photos that your photographer has sent. And from here, you're going to select the photos that you want. notice you can actually say you can actually select all so if you wanted to select all you can click that button and it'll select all of them for you you have the option your your agent or excuse me your photographer does not so when i want to click select all i'll do that and now I'll click add to listing and it will automatically add all the photos that you selected into your listing we'll go ahead and do that now now, at that point, you're going to go ahead and put in any um, caption that you want to put underneath your photos once you see those in the listing. It'll automatically put those in for you, okay? It takes a few minutes, especially if you've got a lot of photos, so be patient with the system as it goes through this process. And it'll take you right into the listing and have you update them from here, okay? So if this is not the front of the house, remember, just kind of move it around. Okay. All right. Um, so that's inviting the photographer. And we, as I said earlier, we're going to stop here on this particular listing because I do want to show you another way to actually put a listing in that might save you some time as well. Okay. So this is just putting in a listing. Yes. Yes, the re the re actually, thank you, Lisa. The recording is going to be out on our YouTube um, video library under FMLS. So when you go to training, click on YouTube, it's going to be in that section. Thank you. All righty. So as we're coming here, we're actually going to close out of the listing section. So close that tab. We're going to go into and click leave. If it says, you know, leave or discard, just go ahead and click leave. I want to go back to Remind from this homepage because I want to show you the other way that you can actually put a listing in. And this is really going to save a lot of time. So from the screen, we're going to click search. And once you hit search, you should be in a main screen. Now, the one thing I want to make sure that you have selected is properties on that upper left-hand corner. So we've got listing, we've got properties. We're going to go to properties. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in an address in the section. And the address, let me put that in our, in our section here. And remember, I told you we are going to be deleting all these out, so don't worry. But if you have your own listing that you're putting in and you want it to go into both sections, go ahead and enter that in, okay? Um, this one's going to be... All right, so this one's going to be 2862 Baker Ridge. All right, sorry, I got some in my glasses. All right, so now we're going to click on, as I've seen this earlier. And here's the thing, if you've ever done a recent search for a property, you can click here. Notice I've got some in Huey. Um, this is actually Hueytown, Alabama. Um, those aren't coming up as much. I'm going to be talking to them about making sure we get those in, moving for people who are from Alabama. We'll make sure we get those in because you can do a nationwide search and actually bring in a property as well. 
But for these, this example, we're going to do 2862 Baker Ridge. Okay. Now, when I bring it up, when I put that address in to my, my section here, it's going to bring up suggestions for the property, as we saw earlier in gray. Um, and to the right, there are two options. You've got the property details and you've got the show on map option. When I train, I usually do the show on map option so you can do the neighborhood um, when I do Remind Pro. But in this case, I just want to click on property details. So put the house number in, house street name, street number, street name, and click on property details. So from this screen, you're going to see, of course, your address at the top. It's going to show that it's off market. So any properties that we we go through this with, they need to be off market properties. Excuse me, off market properties. Okay, and I'll show you why in just a second. So I've got this property. It's got equity. We've got all the great information that we need on the right side of this first panel, you're going to see there's several options. You can share this property. You can save it to a cart. Now, remember I said that Remind does triple duty, right? So you can actually create a CMA from here. You can create a listing to Remind Ad Edit from here, and you can go into Docs Transactions from here, in addition to having all the public record data that's listed for this property, okay? So there's all that information right here for you. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to um, go in and create a listing from here, okay? So what we're going to do is click on Create Listing. And notice what it says. We can create a listing three different ways. We can click it as a new listing. And if you hover over that, it says this is starting a new listing from scratch. That means you're going to manually input all the data, okay? So if this listing is never, if this property has never been in the system at all, you would have to, you would actually do it by scratch. The other option though, is to do it by tax records, which is what we just did for our 4,700 um, Church Street property. We actually pulled up the tax records and it gave us a lot of the data that we needed for our listing, okay? So that's what we did there. And that's what, and Remind will fill in as much data as it can from the system. And then you fill in the rest. But it does save a lot of time for that pre-filled data to, to actually populate for you. Okay. But this, this is the, my favorite way. From any listing, you can click on, if it's got a previous listing, you can click on from previous listing, click on that box. It'll check it. Um, and it's any allowed data from a previous listing will be added to your listing. So all any allowed data. So when you click continue, It'll show any historical listings in the dropdown. So click on the dropdown where it says select. You'll see any listings. I only have one here. So the one from for 2019, about a lot of years ago, um, four years ago. So I'm going to click on the withdrawn listing. And below that, you'll have the option to import photos, but I never recommend doing import photos unless it's your listing and you just finished, like in the same season, you just finished listing this property. OK, um, and it, you cannot do this if you already have an active listing in the system. It will not let you do this part. OK, all right. With that said, though, I'm going to go ahead and click continue. And we're going to walk through completing this listing from the system. OK, so what happens? Remember the last, you know, when we first got in and we did by property tax records, I showed you how that actually worked. So when you do it this way, what happens is it automatically puts the data in at the top. It gives you the identifying data about the property. Um, it will automatically take you here. And if, again, if you're Georgia MLS, you want to put it in here, you can click on that button and add that in too. Um, click on property type, going to next button. That's already going to be selected for you because it's already done. Um, in this case, it's not a registered listing, I don't think. So if it's if it is, if it's not, you can select it here, right? You have that option. I'm gonna go ahead and say no. Click next. Now, here's one piece that you're gonna see that's different. So notice that I don't have a map. Before I had a map there when I put in my address information. The reason this map doesn't come up is, is because sometimes it just doesn't generate. So with that said, what we're going to do is in the box where it says search for your listing address, you're just going to type in the address again, 2832, 62, sorry, Baker Ridge. 
right? And then click on it. And what will happen is it'll automatically populate that map. Now, the thing about the map is there's a, a pin for the actual location for the property, but if you need to adjust that, you can just move it around, right? Just click, hold, and drag it, and you can move it where you want it, okay? Now, as we go down through here, you're going to confirm that all the address information here, oh, looks like legal address is required. You're just going to do whatever that is, right? I'm going to do NA here. Um, and then it's already got your subdivision complex. So now we're finished with that, right? Nothing else to do. Click next. Contract date, we're going to do today's date, expiration date. We're just going to do a couple of days in the future and click next. All right, and now what I'm going to do is, of course, we're going to confirm, right? Because we have all that information there, but we don't have a listing yet. So go ahead and click confirm. All right, so now it's got the information filled in here. Notice how many green checks I have over on that left-hand side, right? So this is one of the benefits of using an existing listing is it actually show, it actually checks a lot of the data that we we have in the system, right? So there's a lot of places we don't have to fill in, but we do have some that we have to do. So I'm going to say this is incomplete here, and I'm going to go to my listing details. So click next. We're going to go, oh, let me put my pricing in first of all. So I don't know why it has price check, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and put in a new price here. So we're going to actually put in 425 for that property. And again, as I said, you don't always have to click on show pricing statistics. You can just go on to the next thing. Okay. For our agency compensation, we're going to click here and put in my 4.5. And again, I'm just kind of showing you, we've already seen these screens, but I'm showing you how much quicker it goes when you actually go in and do this. We're going to make this a vacant home this time. None for special listing conditions and none for this one going through, and again, just kind of going through, clicking the options. And these are things I don't really have to think about, right? Because we've already done the research. We know what we're doing here. Anytime access, and we're going to do showing service. So go and show for this one. Okay, good. And then we're going to come on down. Oh, lockbox. Okay. Contact name. Again, put your agent in. Okay, no and no for conditions, click next. And again, this is, I'm going to save as incomplete as well. Now, remember I told you about the remarks. So here, there are 553 characters as remarks that pulled over from that listing. And here's the thing, if these don't, or these don't um, reconcile with what you want, all you do is go in and delete it. But if this information is valid, you want to just add to it. You have more, you have, um, you're more than welcome to do so. Okay. And here's my direction. So everything's done there, right? My check marks are already there. Now I can just drag and drop. And here's the thing. I don't necessarily have to drag and drop all my photos right off the bat. As long as I have the front of the house, click, you just click on it, click open. That's going to be there. You can just move on to the next thing. And this is not exactly Baker Ridge, but I'm just pulling in photos. Okay, now I'm going to the next screen and it's the financial screen, right? So it tells me I've got one, two, three, four sections that I have to fill in. So I'm just going to put in, I don't know section GMD, I'm just going to put in zero. Um, required field for master association fee. All right, and here's the thing. These become required fields. If you fill in the first field, like if you say no master association fee zero here, this does not become a required field, okay? But it does, it is based on what you need to do. So here, I'm gonna make this a thousand annually. This one's open, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. If there's an initiation fee, make sure you put that in there, guys, because that can be a deal breaker. If you find out at the closing table, there's an initiation fee for a homeowner's association. Um, association, yes. Association fee, $50. Let's say $50. Okay. And then you can put in whatever that means, right? 
Um, if there's a homeowners association, again, there's that's not a requirement, but you, HOA restrictions is, right? So if there's an HOA restriction, you can say yes. Um, owner financing, um, again, I'm just kind of going through here, just kind of answering some of these questions. Um, assumable, no, yes, yes, all right. And don't mind the answers I'm putting in. I'm just going through here so I can make sure that I complete everything. Now, year bill, obviously the year bill is 1962. So I have to have that form 316, you know, lead-based paint. So it's going to have me confirm it, make sure that I get those documents. But it's basically data helping you guys to, to be better agents, right? So it's telling you, you got to get that lead-based paint disclosure in the system, okay? Coming down here, it's um, going through all my information making sure there are no required fields because lot still has a little red dot in it, or a little red dash next to it. So I got to make sure that everything's here. And it tells me property conditions required. So I need to do that, make it a resale. And now that's completed as well, right? So next thing is exterior features. So I can click next to get to exterior features or I can just click on exterior features, okay? So clicking there, um, I've got my foundation. Um, it's going to be concrete perimeter. All right, any other fields that are required? Looks like it's still red, so I still got other things I got to put in here. Oh. So carport was not added, so we're going to put a zero there. But there's still a feature that's not filled in, so I got to go back up and fill out, find out what is required that should not or should have been um, put in here. And sometimes it's not always evident. Oh, yeah, it's giving me that. So car spaces must be blank if carport is not. In, oh, okay. So it says none. And for some reason, I don't know why it's giving me that error message. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out parking features and put in a tat, um, let's see, detach, attach garage, take out none, and then put in two here. See, that's, yeah, there must be something that's triggering. I know they just did some things there, so I don't know. Hopefully, that's going to let me go forward on that. Hold on just a second. Let me select carport as well and see what I need to do here. All right, there we go. So I selected carport and just put it in just so we can get that cleared up, all right? So the last thing we're gonna do is go down to the last screen, which is review. So because everything else is completed, we can click review here. This is the last screen you're gonna see for any listing. Um, and basically what happens is if, let's say that there is a field, let me go back to that, that um, exterior features field for just a second, because I wanna take that out just to show you what will happen. So let's say that, let's see. All right, so let's go here to review. So what will happen if I don't have something completed and I it's there, yeah, but I'm not sure what it what it needs what it's looking for. I can actually click on view errors here and it's going to tell me carport spaces must be blank if carport's not selected, right? So that's going to actually give me that information. I'm not sure why it's is is giving me an error, but so I'm going to hide the error here. And now I can go back over to ex the exterior features and fix the problem. Right, because it's telling me exactly what the problem is. And it will do that. I don't care how many, um, excuse me, don't care how many options there are that you still have to fill in. It will tell you each one of those in detail, okay? All right, so that's under your review section. Um, you also see that this is where you're going to select what your status is going to be. So if you want to keep it as incomplete, you can just save it as incomplete and you're good to go. However, if you want to make it coming soon, for example, when you change it to coming soon, you're going to need to put your on-market date in here. Um, as I, we mentioned before, the on-market date is going to be 30 days past, um, excuse me, 30 days up to, excuse me, up to 30 days after you put the listing in the system. So on that 31st day, that becomes your on-market day, on-market day. Um, for active listings, you're going to put that there. And notice once you select active, there's a publish button that pops up down in the bottom right-hand corner. 
Okay, so that's how you're going to publish your listing. Again, I'm not publishing this listing. We just saved it as incomplete. We're actually going to go back out and finish it. But I just wanted to show you a finished listing once we got done with it. Okay. So join me back. Um, if you would close out of this listing, just go ahead and click leave to close out of the tab and click leave. Now it's going to take us back to the screen where we actually got into the listing. I'm going to X out of that screen because I do want to show you a piece of this, the other piece of this section. And that is creating a transaction from a listing. Your documents. So the way that works is a couple of ways. If you're in the listing already, to the right, there is a button that says, or a section that says create transaction. Okay. What you're going to do is click on create transaction. That is going to take you directly to your forms. Now, a couple of things will happen. Um, it's going to ask you to set up whether it's a sale or a lease, if it's buying listing side or both sides, right? So you're going to select that option once the, the uh, blue icon stops flashing. What's going to happen is it's actually going to allow you to select which side you want to be on. And if you're on both sides, you can select that as well. What that does is it leads to what the roles are for the different people who are going to be signing your documents. Okay. So as soon as this finishes, I guess I should have Muzak, right? <laughs> so sorry. So we're going through here. It's going to eventually let me select listing side. And this will happen. What basically what's happening is it's bringing in not only our Georgia forms, but it's also bringing in Alabama forms. And then we also have now Tennessee forms and it's bringing in too. So it takes a little bit of time when you first set up a transaction because, oh, let me come back out of this. Um, and it will do that too. But um, just click on, just X out of that and it'll come back to the screen. So select my listing side, click next step. It's going to take me in and show me the address that I actually filled in. So you don't have to worry about filling that in. It will, for some reason, it's giving me an option. I'm going to just put this in as stand seller. All right. So that's going to be one of my sellers. And then I'm going to add another seller. So that's going to be Grace Seller. Okay. Stand in Grace. All right. So now, oops. I don't know why I didn't take Grace. There we go. There we go. So once you type them in, that that's going to be set up and then you go ahead and click continue and now it's going to show you just the listing side documents now if you want to see all the forms all you do is select the forms in this case i'm doing georgia forms but you all know that you can also click on either one of these names and open up the form section so clicking on my forms i just open that up it's going to show me the forms that are available it also shows me any georgia forms that are available now just so y'all know i'm bringing up georgia forms because let me close this one up there we go. Georgia forms, because this is where you're going to find your dual entry forms. Okay. Dual entry is where we want to go. When you click on dual entry, what that's going to do is it's going to bring up the forms that have both FMLS and Georgia MLS listing fields in it. So in this case, I want to find the Remind Ad Edit dual entry field for the residential detached section. And of course, y'all can see that they're there for all the property types. So I'm going to select this one because I want that one to be part of my form section, okay? Now, that's a dual entry form. But if you want to go back and you want to add your other forms with this, all you do is click on either, you know, if you're doing RE forms, you can click on the RE forms. Or if you're doing Mid-Georgia forms, you're there. Alabama forms, you can add those in as well. Um, in this case, that doesn't relate, but y'all get the idea, right? So I'm going to click on Georgia Association of Realtors. I'm actually going to bring up the forms that I want. So I want to look for an exclusive seller listing agreement and maybe even bring like the lead-based paint. Remember, we talked about lead-based paint, right? So I can click on those two options. Um, because this is a seller, protect yourself when you're selling property. Um, and I can just kind of scroll down and select the options that I want. So, and what's going to happen is because I'm in listing side, it's going to gray out the buying side forms. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get to them. So if I wanted to click on this broker transaction checklist and contract review, I can just click that and it will actually select it as well. Okay, that's going to be in my list. It just doesn't highlight it because I'm on the listing side forms. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do that. I'm also going to find my, um, let's see, my three F301, which is my 
property disclosure. And you can do any forms that you want at this point, guys. It's up to you. I'm just kind of choosing some of the ones I want to be right off the bat. Okay. It's going to show up in my selections down at the bottom. If I want to view them, I can just click on that little eye. If I want to move them in order, if I want to move them around, all I do is I click on this little page and it actually allows me to drag and drop the order that I want them to be in. Okay. In this case, let me put the remind added at first. All right. So once you're done, click next. That takes you right into your form section and allows you to click on a form to actually edit it. The thing I like about this program is when you click on the form name, it'll take you into that form so that you can actually fill in the fields. So if you're on a listing appointment, if you're going to a listing appointment, you want to take your pad with you, you could actually walk through all the different fields that you would have in a house, like special circumstances, everything that we needed to answer for our listing, proposed financing, um, with showing instructions, lockbox type, everything that you saw that we filled in, you can actually um, fill in on this form. And, if, and especially if you've got somebody putting your listing in for you, now you can actually take this, complete it, and send this right to you know, whoever you want to send it. You can actually have it signed by your client right in person and then send it on to your office manager or whoever your coordinator is to put the listing in the system. Right? And you have not only FMLS, but you also have Georgia MLS fields in, the, in this particular document. Okay, And we are doing some other things. We're working on some other procedures um, to maybe incorporate other um, MLSs in. I mean, that's going to be the goal long term, but you know, there's a lot of um, processes that we have to establish before we get to that point. But just so y'all know that this is something that's kind of in the in the in the works. Now, that's the residential dual entry form. And remember, that's the one I clicked on to get in here so I can edit. And you can just go in and put in, you know, whatever you want to type in. You can actually put that put that information in. You kind of come up to here. Um, come up to the first section. So if I want to put in remarks here or directions, you know, it's easy to type in from here and you can save it. Um, and let me pull that down. It's a little bit big. All right. So as we come up to the, the top of the section, let me just kind of adjust on just a second. There we go. All right. So as we come up to the top, You're going to see also that it's going to give you um, a place where you can see who's in the system. So you can edit the people that you want, put their roles in. Right now, I've got Stan and Grace, and then I'm the broker. Um, but you can edit people. You can add um, people who are part of this particular uh, process as well. Okay. Now, also on that left-hand side, I can click on this name, the first one for Remind Dual Entry. And if I want to get to the other forms, guess what? They've all loaded for me. So all I got to do is click on exclusive seller broker engagement. And now I can look at that form and see that that information has also been filled in for me. Some of the information has already been filled in for me, right? If I want to put in, for example, um, um, the book page, um, I can just click on the, the selections that I have and it's going to automatically feed in whatever's in the system. It's going to feed it into these forms. Okay, so that's just a nice way to get to your forms. And notice that I did all of this and this is actually auto-saved and everything. So once I come out, I'm gonna be right here in my transactions and it's gonna automatically have that transaction listed for Baker Ridge, okay? So you can get into it at any point. If I go back to my dashboard, um, I can actually create a new transaction. If I wanna upload any full, uh, files to it, I can come back over to my transactions Go to Baker Ridge and I can actually upload, when I get in, I can upload those documents into the system, okay? It also gives me the ability, if I want to show a document, for example, if I have that seller's property disclosure and I want to show that on my listing, I can actually check that box to the seller's property disclosure. And there's an option that says MLS visibility. All I do is click MLS visibility and now I it has the listing number in it. I can automatically share it either just with MLS agents or I can share it with everybody so that if it goes out as it, in one home or wherever, um, those documents actually will be shared as public eventually, right? So that's, a, that's an option as well.
or if I even email it out, it'll be visible. Okay. So that's one of the options that you have to having this in the system. Okay. So that's one way to get into it. So I did that from the listing right here where it says create transaction. The other option is from Remind. I'm going to close out of this tab here. From Remind, you're going to go right into Docs Plus. And once you click on Docs Plus, it takes you into the main system. Now, from here, you can create a transaction. You can upload a file um, or you can impersonate a user. You may not always have this if you're not a, a, a manager or not. But as I said, you can create that transaction right by clicking this button. Um, you have the ability to bring up the forms by going to right to the form library. So if you just want to pull up a form, just a blank form, you can click on form library, go to the Georgia forms, just click on the name, go to dual entry forms, and now you can just pull up that form. Now, the great thing about this is right from here, if I click on that, excuse me, if I click on the form name, it will allow me to download that PDF. So if I want to take it with me as a PDF, I can just download it to my desktop and that way it becomes, instead of having it in the system, it's actually on my desktop and I can make copies of this um, so that I can use it over and over again with all the sell, all the, the potential sellers that I have, right? Or you can use it now. When you click use now, that allows you ability again to go create a new transaction or add it to an existing transaction. So let's say that I'm adding it to an existing transaction. I can click right here find that 2862 Baker Ridge and add it into that system, okay? I've already got one here, but just in case, I can add it into that folder. Or I can create a new folder and do it from there. And again, Remind Docs Plus, there's a whole nother class on the system. So I don't want to, <laughs> I don't be the dead horse, but y'all get the idea, right? It's really accessible and it's really, I love how integrated the system is. Now, I'm going to come out of this, um, this screen because I do want to show you one more thing, and that is where to get help. So close out, or, sorry, let me go back in from this homepage. I want to go back into products, back into Remind, because I do want to do one more thing here. As I said earlier, we want to make sure that we close out of those incomplete listings. So from here, we're going to click on Add Edit. We're going to go to incomplete. Oh, let me talk about that for just a moment. So in our listings, if we want to delete a listing, we can just click here and we can delete it out. So let's say that we want to delete Church Street. We just click on the trash can. It's going to ask us to confirm it. We'll delete it. Okay. Now, if you have, if you need to go in and edit a listing, and let me just go to incomplete first, you can click on the name, as I said earlier, or you can click on the pencil. When you click on the pencil, Either way, it's going to bring up our listing tab. It's going to give the ability to edit the listing. Click here, it takes you right in. You can update the price right from here, the status. Um, as I said earlier, you can click on view log to go in and look at what you've entered. Um, if you need to create an open house, you can actually click here to create. When you open it up, put in your date. So let's say my date's going to be the 15th. I can actually put in my start time and my end time for that open house as well as remarks and then cl click create, okay? I would probably recommend putting the listing in the system, you know, not having it incomplete before you do that though. Um, you've got your edit remarks option. You also have the ability to put in your virtual tour, make any changes for the virtual tour. And then you also have the option to delete a listing from here. And again, you can do that also by clicking on um, Baker Ridge, the name of the listing as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, again, we're going to delete that listing and go ahead and get out of that, the two listings that we worked on today. All right, but for published listings, let me just go over here because I do want to show this as well. So once you've published a listing, and let's go ahead and click on that, that first name of the published listing. That's going to take you in and it's going to show you everything that you can update. So as I said earlier, you can click on update price. It takes you in. Update status takes you in as well. Um, if you click on edit listing, that's going to take you right into the listing for edit um, of any of that information. Again, you've seen, um, you got your listing history. You can click on view log here. Um, you could open, a, create an open house. You can also edit any remarks. So you can do that by clicking on this button where it says edit remarks, or you can click on the pencil to update any of those listings. 
In addition, you, if you need to update your virtual tours, you can click here and it'll update the unbranded virtual tour, also the virtual tour that you have, the second unbranded virtual tour. Also, you have your integration. So I mentioned that earlier. So you can integrate with Showing Time. When you click on Add next to Showing Time, it will automatically show you um, right where you can go into Showing Time and actually update that information. Okay. Um, and that just takes you into a second separate tab. So when you're done, you could just X out of that tab. And now you're back into your listing information. And for Super, it's the same thing. When you click on Add here, it allows you to go in and put in your key box or your serial number and shackle code. Okay. All right. Um, oh, and as I was saying earlier, going back. So once we're done with all of that, you're going to click on the X to get rid of all that information. You're going to go back to, let me come out of Remind and go back to the home page. So places where you can get help are going to be on your home page. If you go to training and YouTube training, you're going to see this video will be posted here under the Remind section. The easiest way to do that is you're going to click on um, playlist right here in the middle. And once you click on playlist, you can go to Remind and it'll have all the Remind videos that we actually post. So it'll show the whole list. Sorry. It'll show the whole list of Remind. There's a couple of Remind added videos, but you'll be able to go in and look at those. You'll also see that Remind Docs Plus and Remind, the actual system Remind is going to be in there as well. So um, just click on that Remind added at webinar and you'll be able to see this information again. Okay. In addition, if you come here, go to, um, from back to your homepage, you're going to go to support go to knowledge base. So once you go to knowledge base, what you're going to see is all of our products and all the knowledge under each one of these tabs. So you're gonna to go to Remind here. So support knowledge base, then Remind, and you're gonna find Remind Add Edit. So adding and editing listings, everything that we talked about guys is all right here, as well as having a guide here that is that you can actually download to your desktop, okay?